Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of September. This month we've got quite a few things going on. We have Mercury in retrograde. We have a few planets in retrograde actually, so I will talk you through all of that in my introduction. Of course, if you would like to skip ahead and just get straight into your mini reports, there are clickable links in the description and I'll pin a comment as well so you will easily be able to get straight to your mini report where I will be covering Mercury retrograde along with a couple of other things. But if you'd like to stick around for the intro, why don't we get stuck in? Now this month, as I said, we do have Mercury retrograde. That's really big and Mercury will be exalted in Virgo. So this is really powerful energy. It's really strong, great energy to re-strategize, to rethink plan something you know and definitely plan your year ahead actually if you want to think to the start of next year and think about how you want the next 2.5 years to go this is a really good time to be strategizing that we have time up our sleeve at the moment to look ahead a bit I'm going to start with a very brief news matchup. I don't have much of a news matchup in terms of what's been going on in the collective, but I just wanted to very quickly bring up this video. Uh, I've got a couple of screen grabs of it. It's a video by Sky News and they had the headline, tomorrow could be the most dangerous day of this century. And that's a very attention grabbing headline, isn't it? Now, I actually haven't watched the full video, but I bring this up because it is a manifestation of the energy that I was talking about myself and so many astrologers, both Western and sidereal astrologers, you know, tropical and sidereal. We've all been talking about this. We've all been talking about early August, you know, the dates from around the 1st to the 5th of August, there was supposed to be some kind of tension, some kind of challenge, or, you know, there was this strong masculine energy in the sky, something changeable could happen. And I just wanted to bring this up to say, look, this video is a manifestation of that energy. Okay, that headline, tomorrow could be the most dangerous day of the century. I'm sure Sky News is not employing a Vedic astrologer or anything like that. I don't think they've got any astrologers on their team and yet they are running a headline like that. Uh, there's also another screen grab that I'll bring up from this same video with the headline, China conducts live fire military exercise near Taiwan, warns Pelosi not to visit. Now this video was posted on the 2nd of August and the 2nd of August was when we had that very intense conjunction between Mars, Uranus, and North Node Rahu. Okay, so there is, you know, astrology really does match with what's going on in the world. And I realize that a skeptic could say, oh, look, well, you could pull up any newspaper from anywhere around the world and find a headline that would match your prediction. That is true. I see that side of things as well. But I was pretty impressed by this. I thought this, you know, showed that the tension that we were all talking about, it really did manifest. And thankfully not in in the way that some of us might have been predicting. And that's always a good thing. We don't want any of these bad things to happen. But for the month of September, I'm not seeing anything too intense or anything like that. I have been hearing that October there could be some tensions there and I'll take a look at that when we get to the month of October. But why don't we take a look at what's happening this month in September? As I say, I don't think it's going to be too much of an intense month. I do see, in fact, that I think we're going to have time on our hands, time up our sleeve, the ability to plan ahead, the ability to rethink things, you know, because we're going to have Mercury in retrograde but we've also got Jupiter in retrograde, Saturn is in retrograde. And if you look at the outer planets as well, the outer three planets are all also in retrograde. So what does that mean? It means that the Earth is moving faster. Okay, so we're moving a bit faster. And I do believe that, you know, with the planets 
their gaze is not so strong on planet Earth. We're moving a little bit faster. I think surely we've got some time on our hands and we've got some ability to plan ahead, to think about what it is that we really want to create going forward. And that's because Mercury is going to be so strong. He's exalted in Virgo and he's going to be going retrograde. So he's really powerful. And Virgo is a very strategic and important part of the zodiac. You know, Virgo is where, and especially when Mercury is concerned, Mercury really loves to get in there and plan ahead. You know, think about the next 10 moves ahead. That's what Mercury loves to do. Mercury loves to think about, you know, a chessboard or something like that. And what are the next 10 moves ahead? Can I plan things? You know, what would I do if this happened? What would I do if that happened? So we've got that energy in the sky across the month of September. So I have the note here. Yeah, this is a month to think carefully. It's a thinking month. It's not really a feeling month. Uh, not so much because Venus is going to be leaving Leo and she's going to be heading into Virgo and she likes to think a lot there you know she likes to think a lot in Libra as well she's more work focused when she's in Virgo in Libra also in Capricorn okay these are the three areas where Venus doesn't do so well so we're gonna have a lot of the faster moving planets and energies all you know kind of straddling Leo and Virgo across this next phase there is still some heavy Capricorn energy in the sky. Uh, that is true, you know, Saturn is retrograde there, but I do believe with this retrograde phase, he's just finishing off his work. What you will be observing is that some of you right now will be re being rewarded, okay? If, and see how you feel with the energy. Some of you might be revisiting old things or having to do old things again, Equally, some of you might even be feeling a bit freer. You might be feeling like you're being rewarded right now or that good things are starting to come in or that the hard work of the last two years, since about early 2020, you'll start to feel that some of that's going to pay, start paying off anyway um, across these months. Some of you are experiencing that right now. So that's great. And don't worry if you're not, because Saturn is giving everybody an opportunity right now until the end of the year to tie off loose ends, to finish things, any projects that you said you would do, you will have the time to get them done. There's time, okay, especially across the month of September. See it as this, it's a little bit of a gift, I do think. September is, is a gift of time for all of us. So that is a really good thing. I also have the note here, that you know Saturn is very much thinking ahead to Aquarius the elites are still clinging on to power that is true they are going to try stuff here and there and a lot of people are predicting October things might happen etc I will have a look when that time comes closer but I do think that the word clinging is, is, is quite true. You know I think so many people are awakening on the planet things are changing and we're going to see that escalate and happen more rapidly at the start of next year when Saturn moves into Aquarius. The spotlight will be on humanity. It's going to be our turn, you know, to to create new things. And that is happening. I did want to say that. Let's have a look at the time. We're okay. Uh, I did want to just say that quickly that I've been working with a lot of you, the client readings and client bookings and things like that. I've worked with quite a few nurses and quite a few people in the medical field who are basically fed up. They're wanting to leave. They're wanting to start their own venture. They're serious about healing and about helping people. And, you know, um, there are a lot of you guys that I've worked with, amazing, amazing people. And I just wanted to say, hang in there. The world is changing. You are going to get the opportunity to create your thing. You know, we're really going to see this. The 2.5 years starting next year when Saturn moves into Aquarius, there's going to be a lot of change. Grassroots movements, people starting their healing practices, real work happening, you know, a flourishing of, of new energy. It's coming. There's just this phase that we've got to get through from now until the end of the year where we're all kind of tying off loose ends and a lot of us are getting ready and thankfully we're going to be given time across September to lay down our plans get ready and, and even get on with things you know so good energy is on the way in an overall sense now 
in the mini reports this time I will be covering Venus in Leo. Uh, Venus is going to be in Leo until the 24th. She's really happy there. She loves Leo. Leo is the place of romance, it's creativity, it's children, it's all these beautiful things. Venus loves to be there but then she's going to be debilitated in Virgo. That's after the 24th. Now this is interesting because she's going to be in there with the Lord of the House. She's going to be in there with an exalted Mercury. So this really does qualify for a Nietzsche Bhanga Raj Yoga type situation. So I actually think this could even be, I've got on my notes here in brackets, a summer of love. Uh, this is, you know, summer in the northern hemisphere, of course, but a summer of love, sort of loving your creativity or loving your work. It's not really that kind of uh, hippie type summer of love that, you know, we could see next year, that type of thing. But there's some good energy here across the summer, so I'm loving this. We've got sun in Leo and mid-month sun is going to move so that's around the 17th 18th of the month he's going to move from leo into virgo so we've got sun having this stretch from leo to virgo this is brilliant strong leadership energy it's strong masculine energy but it's good masculine energy this is the honest noble good you know hard working masculine energy i've got here drive courage ambition these beautiful things we're going to have that some of that in the sky we've got mercury exalted in virgo he's there all month and he retrogrades from 11 september to the 2nd of october okay so for the majority of the month of september mercury will be in retrograde and i do believe that all the retrograde energy collectively in the sky where the earth is moving a just that much faster is really just going to give us time okay so if you need time to catch up on something time to plan ahead time to really think things through it's not a great time to rush you don't want to be rushing anything you do want to be deliberately thinking and choosing and plotting and planning that's that's going to be good we've got a full moon in Purva Bhadrapada Nakshatra that's Aquarius that's 10th September I do believe this is all about unification because we've got Jupiter, the Lord of Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra. Jupiter is currently in Pisces. He's retrograde there. We're looking at ways to unite. We're looking at ways to come together. That energy is there in the sky. Now Venus is with the sun as part of this full moon. So, you know, there's a touch of love in this full moon energy as well, which is really nice. And then on the 26th of September, we have a new moon in Uttrafalguni Nakshatra that's in Virgo and I love the planets that are all there because we've got Sun and Moon, we've got uh, Mercury and Venus, we've got the artist combination there so this is very much and it's all in Virgo, this is all earth energy, so this is very much about earthing your creativity. You know the Sun is also in its own nakshatra so this is a very powerful new moon for making a wish. You've got Upachaya energy here in Virgo and so you know there's this ability that if you plant a seed it will grow over time. So why don't we take a look at the mini reports. All right, why don't we welcome Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look at the Sun, Venus and Mercury as well as the full moon and the new moon. So why don't we start with the Sun. So the Sun transitions from Leo to Virgo and by the way this is for ascendant moon or sun okay you can look at your sun as well if you want to right let's start with the sun so the sun transitions from leo to virgo across the 17th or 18th of the month of september so this is going to be sun transitioning from the fifth and sixth houses in your chart so this is strong leadership energy if you're at work, you're a manager, that kind of thing, you have a team or any of that, uh, definitely go easy on your staff. You know, if you have children, go easy on your children, okay? And that's definitely for the first half of September. And then you've got a lot of winning energy, okay? Mid-month onwards, so that's after 17th, 18th. There's all this winning energy. Sun will cross into your sixth house. This is great for things like court cases, uh, or even just boosting your confidence. If you're looking for work, this is great. If you have a presentation to do or you want to express your ideas at work, this is really good energy for that. We've got Venus in Leo until the 24th of September in your fifth house. 
So this is beautiful energy for creativity. If you've got children, great time to just have a lot of fun with them. Uh, this is good for romance, great for singles. Okay, if you want to be social or you know, there's some, somebody on your scene or something like that. So it's beautiful energy here up until about the 24th of September. Then Aries, you will notice that romance, love life might take a little bit of a, a dip for a time after that. So make the most of Venus in Leo until the 24th. Then we've got Mercury exalted all month in your sixth house. This is great, okay? You're one of the lucky signs who's got brilliant Mercury energy. You can really take advantage of this. Now from the 11th of September to the 2nd of October, Mercury will be in retrograde. <clears throat> so during that retrograde period, I do believe that we're all going to have a little bit of time, a little bit of extra time just to think about things, just to strategize, just to, you know, plot and plan. And you can definitely be planning the year ahead. Okay, so 2023, you can really be thinking about, okay, how do I want that year to go? Now's a good time to be doing that. The other beautiful thing that you've got going on with this Mercury energy is that you can really shine at work. Okay, people will notice you, you'll be sharp, you'll be witty, you'll be saying all the right things. You know, you can win extra clients. Uh, if you do social media or any of that, that should be amazing from a Mercury point of view, especially with fine detail and, and things like that. It's really great. Now there's a full moon happening on the 10th of September. This is in Aquarius Purva Bhadra Bhadra Nakshatra, which for you is in your 11th house. This is great for romance. This is a beautiful full moon. Uh, it's also a really good time for you to reflect on how united you are with your friends. It's a great time to think about your friendship circles, your network circles, perhaps your social media, things like that. Just reflect on how that is, how that's changed over time and you know how you fit in with all of that. Something might occur to you at that time. Now there's a new moon on the 26th of September. That's Virgo Uttra Falguni Nakshatra. This is all happening in your sixth house. Again, this is such beautiful energy and this is great for you to get hands on with your creativity, with your artwork, okay, because we do have earth energy here in Virgo and especially any projects at work that you want to get underway or get happening in a hands on kind of a way. This could be a really good time to start a project at this time. Okay, so if there's something big that you want to start, 26th of September should be a really good day actually and especially in terms of your work. And you can also wish for something. It is a new moon so you can put forward a wish and you can wish for something relating to your career. If there's, you know, you want that next step or you want some more authority or you want to do the next thing, you're ready, wish for that to happen. You can also, if you've been having any health challenges and you want something to clear, you can definitely put in a wish for that to heal and change as well. So Aries, it's looking like a good month ahead for you. I'm really excited about your Mercury energy. That looks fantastic, just checking the time. All right, we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now we're gonna take a look at the Sun, Venus, Mercury. We're also gonna take a look at the full moon and the new moon. So the Sun will transition from Leo to Virgo across the 17th, 18th, and that's 17th, 18th September. And that's moving across your fourth and fifth houses. So for the first half of the month, if you have to move, it's not the best time to move. So if you can delay moving, that would be a good thing. If you have to move, then just do so carefully, okay? Just don't be in a rush, build extra time into your plans and it will be fine, but just take extra care, okay? Because the sun in this place, he can kind of dry things up, he can make things a bit more expensive for you. So I'm kind of talking in those terms, just, you know, take care uh, if you have to move in the first half of the month. Now the second half of the month, definitely take care of your health. Uh, you could find that, you know, you're a bit overworked, overrun, that kind of thing. Expenses could be higher and you might also have to take care at work as well, especially if you run a team or any of that. Uh, just take, take extra care, avoid arguments, that kind of thing. 
Now Venus is in Leo until the 24th of September in your fourth house. This is beautiful energy. Oh, I love this. So Venus is having a great time here. Venus loves to be at home. She loves to cook beautiful foods. She loves to spend time with the family. She loves to pamper herself. So make sure you do any one of those things that sounds good to you. Definitely a great time to relax at home this month if you can. Now Mercury is exalted all month in your fifth house. This is from the 11th of September to the 2nd of October. He's going to be retrograde in your fifth house. Okay, so we've got a retrograde here. Yes, it's a good time to re-strategize your finances. Think long term regarding financial investments. Also, think long term about how you bring money in. Do you have some plans around how you want to bring more in? Sometimes when it comes to finances, we're so concerned with budgeting and how do I spend less? How about how do I bring more in, you know? And that's a good thing to do if you want to think about that. Your Mercury will help you generate ideas and think up ways you can bring more money in. There is strong energy at work for you. And I have the note here, be sensitive with those around you, okay? Your coworkers. Some people also might come to you for wisdom. So just brace yourself for that. There could be something interesting happening at work and there's something about your Mercury energy that might be quite useful or handy in the workplace. Uh, and good, good to be a little bit extra sensitive with those around you. Now the full moon on the 10th of September is in Aquarius, Purva Bhadrapada Nakshatra. This is happening in your 10th house. So there's some beautiful energy at home there because Venus is over there with the sun. But when it comes to the full moon, definitely reflect on connections at work and how you belong in the workplace. Do you feel like you fit in? Is this the right workplace for you? And what might happen is that something might occur to you in this process of reflection. The full moon is on, the light, it, there's more light. So you might gain some insights here about how you belong in your workplace. Something will occur to you. There's a new moon happening on the 26th of September. That's in Virgo, Uttrafalguni Nakshatra, happening for you in your fifth house. So this is great energy for your creativity. It's a great time to earth some creative project. This is a great time to start a creative project and especially a creative project that's kind of not necessarily relating to your work. It's just some passion project, some art, something that you really want to make, something really creative. So the other thing you could find on the 26th of September is you get lots of creative ideas. Uh, so definitely have a little journal or keep a journal by your bed if you want to note down your dreams or any of that. And it's a great time as well to wish for a child. And there is also, there's new moon energy here in your fifth house. You might be more fertile, so that's just something to bear in mind. But it's a great time to wish for a child if that's something you want. Taurus, it's looking like a pretty good month. And I'm really loving your Venus energy in particular. That is quite a standout. So thank you so much for joining. And we are now gonna welcome Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon, Gemini Sun. And we're going to take a look at the movement of the Sun, Venus, Mercury, and the full moon and the new moon. So the Sun, what do we have here? Well, the Sun is going to transition from Leo to Virgo across the 17th or 18th of September. And that's happening across your third and fourth houses. So for the first half of the month, you're going to discover that the energy is fantastic and you will really shine at work. You'll be able to present your ideas, they'll be well received. Uh, you'll be able to promote yourself, get new clients. And if you're looking for work, this is great energy for that. Now the second half of the month, if you have to move or anything like that, maybe you know your lease is up, you have to move any of that, just be careful, okay? Because uh, expenses could be higher or things could be inconvenient. Uh, it's a time where you know the Sun is drying up that fourth house of home there so just take a bit of extra care or build time into your plans if you do have to move. Now Venus is in Leo until the 24th of September and she's going to be in your third house. 
This is beautiful energy. This is really great social energy. So if you haven't seen your friends for a while, try and catch up with your friends. Also, this is great energy if you want to meet someone new. And what you will find with this Venus in Leo energy is that you'll be feeling beautiful and confident on the inside. It's really nice energy. Now you've got brilliant Mercury energy. I'm so happy about this. Mercury is exalted all month in your fourth house. And you're one of the lucky signs to have Mercury transiting in a really good position. So this does indicate stronger earnings, uh, recognition at work, and definitely if you're wanting to pick up work or pick up clients, this is good energy for that. You're gonna be sharper in your mind, you're going to be witty, it's gonna be great. Now there's a retrograde happening from the 11th of September to the 2nd of October. And during this time, you might want to re-strategize any long-term plans regarding your home, your house, where you live. Uh, and this could even be re-strategizing finances, long-term finances, your work, career as well. But this is good to, for you to start thinking about plans for the start of next year. Start planning that now. There's energy and time for that, so use it. There's a full moon happening on the 10th of September. This is in Aquarius Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra in your ninth house. Now, because Venus is there with the sun as part of this full moon energy, you're going to have confidence. You're going to have inner confidence. And this is also a good time to reflect on your place in the world and your beliefs. So what do you believe in and what would you fight for? It's just something that you have to fight for. We've got this gorgeous Aquarius energy here, you know, uh, and this is about your place in the world and what, yeah, what it is that you want to fight for. So do reflect on that over this full moon. Something might occur to you there and that could be quite important for you going forward. Now there's a new moon happening on the 26th of September in Virgo Uttrafalguni Nakshatra in your fourth house. So you might be getting ideas as to something you want to change about your home or maybe some interior design thing that you want to do in your home or there's some creativity, there's some creative energy and it's in connection with your home. The other thing as part of this new moon on the 26th of September is that you might want to wish for a new home or a new location or an upgrade or a renovation or something, some improvement to do with your home. But Gemini, there's beautiful energy here for you this month. It's looking really good and you're one of the lucky signs who's got brilliant Mercury energy. So please do make the most of that. All right, we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon, Cancer Sun. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the movement of the Sun, Venus, Mercury. We're also going to have a look at the full moon and the new moon. So it's quite a bit. Now the Sun transitions from Leo to Virgo across the 17th, 18th of September. And this is happening across your second and third houses. So for the first half of the month, do look after your energy. You might be feeling a little bit tired, a little bit run down. You might be a little bit more prone to headaches than usual. The second half of the month, you're going to experience fantastic energy. Okay, the sun really lights up there in the third. This beautiful Upachaya energy is just really going to light up. So you've got fantastic energy to achieve a lot at work. This is a great time to promote yourself. If you do social media or any of that, this is really great energy for all of that as well. Now Venus is in Leo until the 24th of September in your second house. So this is a great time to buy something expensive and beautiful. If there's something that you've been eyeing out for a long time, or you've been saving up for a long time, well, this is the time to buy it. Now, do take care. Saturn's going to be in your seventh house, and he will want to make sure that you have the finances for it. So don't put it on debt or any of that. But if it's easy for you to do, and it's been something you've been planning for for a long time, definitely treat yourself. Uh, and if not that, treat yourself to some delicious meal somewhere or something like that. Now, Mercury is exalted all month in your third house. And Mercury is going to be retrograde from 11 September to 2nd October. So what does this mean for you? Well, for you, you're going to want to re-strategize long-term plans regarding either your work or friendships, actually. 
Uh, this could also be looking at travel as well. You might want to re-strategize some travel plans or if, if you've been thinking about big travel plans that you want to do like next year or something like that, this could be a good time to be thinking about that, planning, you know, saving for that, that kind of thing. Now there's a full moon happening on the 10th of September in Aquarius, Purva Bhadrapada Nakshatra in your 8th house. Now you're going to have some beautiful energy at home there because Venus is in the second house. But when it comes to this full moon energy, one of the great things you'll be able to do is reflect on how unified your family feels at this time. Okay, and something is just going to become clear to you and there's no judgment here. If you're not unified, if, if there's arguments or whatever, it doesn't matter. You're just looking at how together are you, something will occur to you in this process of reflection or looking at just we're just looking at the unification of your family. Are you guys a unit? You know, what, what's the energy like there? there? There's just something's going to be illuminated in that area for you. And then there's a new moon on the 26th of September, Virgo Uttarfalguni Nakshatra happening in your third house. So you could have some really good insights about your friends, about people around you. Something might become clear, you might get some aha moments that, wow, you know, that person's always been there for me, you know, uh, and you can see maybe the ones that haven't been, but this is, this is going to be about your friendship circle. And this is also on the 26th, a really good time for you to wish for that next step in your career, okay? If there's something you want to change about your work or you know that this isn't it, and I'm, I'm going somewhere, it's like, come on angels, show me the next thing, right? You want to see the next thing. You want that to be revealed for, to you, so wish for that on the 26th of September. But Cancer, it's looking like a really nice month for you. And you know what? I'm loving your sun energy in the second half of the month. That looks beautiful. So make sure you enjoy that. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we are now going to meet Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon, Leo Sun. And we're going to take a look at the movement of the Sun. We're going to take a look at Venus, Mercury, the full Moon and the new Moon. So we've got a lot to cover. Now Sun transits from Leo to Virgo across the 17th, 18th of the month. And that's happening across your first and second houses. So for the whole month, Leo, you're really going to want to look after your physical health. Okay, because you might feel tired, you might feel run down, you might notice that, uh, you know, expenses go up or something just, I don't know, that something, something dries up the area basically of the first and second houses. You might notice, did I mention that expenses might go up? Expenses might go up. Also, you might feel like being alone a bit more. So take it easy, take time out. If you want to isolate a bit, that's fine. Now Venus is in Leo until the 24th of September in your first house. So this is lovely energy that's supporting the sun here. This is quite nice for that first part of the first two thirds really of the month there. Venus is there and that's great to nourish yourself physically, you know, so you've got some good energy that will help you. Uh, you can look to improve your diet. You can look to re-establish a health routine or some kind of gym routine or something like that. Um, but it's a good time as well. Slow down, relax, unwind if you can and nurture yourself, nourish yourself with that Venus energy there. Now Mercury is exalted all month in your second house. Oh this is beautiful energy. So this is great. Uh, from the 11th September to 2nd October Mercury will be in retrograde but really for the whole month, Mercury is delivering beautiful energy to you. So this is excellent energy for you to shine at work, to get extra gains. You can be extra sharp at work. And this is all to do with your thinking. This is to do with your wit, your speech, all that kind of thing. Now, the other thing that you can do with this retrograde energy is you can re-strategize any long-term family plans that you have. This is a really good month to think ahead, to think about the start of next year and how do you want things to progress. It would be really good to use this energy to start laying a foundation or ideas, plans, just, just start planning. That would be really good. But beautiful Mercury energy for you specifically, Leo, this is great. 
Now there's a full moon happening on the 10th of September in Aquarius, Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra in your seventh house. Now Venus is part of this. She's in the first house of self there. She might be aiding your confidence, which is great. Okay, but in terms of this full moon, one of the things it will get you to do is it will get you to reflect on your place in life and especially how you fit with your partner, how you fit at work, how you fit with like one on one with the important and significant individuals in your life. You're just going to get more ideas, more illumination on how you fit with the significant others in your life. This, this is good energy. So just reflect, just see what comes, you know, and this is not a time to be judgmental or you're not going to do anything, none of that. You're just reflecting, you're just looking, you're just seeing. Something will become clear to you. And through that clarity, you'll be able to move forward with greater ease, greater confidence. There's a new moon happening on the 26th of September in Virgo, Uttrafalguni Nakshatra, happening in your second house. So you could have some insights come in here for your family. Something might occur to you about your family, but some kind of insights might come through some downloads, some kind of information might come to you, occur to you. And it's a great time actually to wish for more wealth and abundance because we do have, you know, new moon on the 26th of September, you can wish for something, you can plant a seed. So for you, plant a seed for more wealth. Okay, that would be a really good thing to do. But Leo, fantastic energy for you this month, especially that Mercury, great energy. And that's the most significant energy this month. So you've got some beautiful energy there. All right, we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Just checking the time. This is Virgo, Ascendant, Sun or Moon. And today we are going to cover the movement of the Sun, Venus, Mercury. We're also going to have a look at the full moon and the new moon. So now the Sun transitions from Virgo, from Leo, sorry, to Virgo across the 17th, 18th of the month. And that's across your 12th and first houses. So for the first half of the month, you might find it hard to sleep. Uh, but the second half of the month, you know, hopefully you're really looking after your health by this time. You might have one or two sleepless nights, not the whole time, but you know, just bear in mind that it could be to do with the sun energy. Now the second half of the month, ideally you're really looking after your health and you're going to be shining, okay? You're going to be really creative. You're going to be on fire. This is exalted Mercury here for you, okay? So this is going to be great for your work. This is going to be great for social media, great for being seen. You might be quite on it when it comes to your words and speech and wit and charm and all that kind of thing. Now you've got Venus in Leo until the 24th of September and that's in your 12th house. So this is beautiful divine energy, okay? So this is a great time to indulge in spirituality, uh, to indulge in you know, beautiful teachings, any of that. But equally, if you're very creative, this is a great time to tune in, to try and connect, to try and get ideas and downloads and insights. This is great energy there. Now Mercury is exalted all month in the first house. It's very significant for you, Virgo. So it's going to be exalted all month and there's going to be a retrograde from the 11th of September to the 2nd of October. Now for you, this is going to help you to re-strategize any long-term life plans. So you can be thinking years ahead, really, if you want to. Uh, and we all do that from time to time. You know, sometimes we're looking a bit ahead. Sometimes we're, we're kind of fantasizing, right? But you, you, you've kind of got permission to do so here. Really think long-term if you can. Uh, across, especially across 11 September to 2nd October, there's going to be energy and time for you to think in a long-term way about your whole life and about all areas of your life. So yeah, I have a note here, energy is strong and time is on your side. So work that you achieve now and plans that you set now can have a really long-term impact. So definitely be planning ahead. Even if that's just in your mind, you know, just have a think about what you want to do. Now there's a full moon happening on the 10th of September in Aquarius, Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra, happening in your sixth house. So this is really interesting energy. You've got Venus there being all divine in the 12th. What's happening here in the sixth? Well, you know, there's a lot of powerful energy here. One thing you can do is reflect 
on how unified things are in your workplace or in your service or what you do in the world or with your client base or this is how you fit in at work and this is a good time for you to think about where do I fit? How do I fit? Do I belong? And this is not about judgment or you know any particular thing. This is just about looking. We're just looking because the full moon is on. There's all this beautiful light and it will illuminate something for you. And then that might help you move forward in a more clear way later on. There's a new moon happening on the 26th of September in Virgo, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra in your first house. So you could get some really major insights about your life at this time. Some downloads, some ideas, some powerful insights uh, could occur to you during this new moon. And it's a really great time for you to wish big, wish for anything that you want to have happen in your life. What's dear to your heart? What would you love to see happen? And I'll tell you who's a good person to read or study at this time when it comes to Law of Attraction. I've been reading the books of Neville Goddard and I'm loving it. He's teaching the mechanics of how to really wish for something and materialize it. You know, how to visualize it, use your imagination because it's so powerful. And Virgo, I tell you of all the signs this month, you've particularly got a strong imagination this month. So use it. Use it for materializing, thinking, imagining, right? Imagining and then you'll eventually be able to materialize it in the world. And look up Neville Goddard, definitely. All right, well it's a good month ahead for you Virgo. I'm wishing you well. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Libra, Ascendant, Moon or Sun. And we're going to take a look at the movement of the Sun, Venus, Mercury. We're going to have a look at the full moon and the new moon. So the Sun transitions from Leo to Virgo across the 17th or 18th of the month. And this is happening across your 11th and 12th houses. So for the first half of the month, you've got this powerful Sun energy that's really going to bring you success and wealth, earnings, you know, grow your network, all kinds of things. It's great energy. If you're not working, it's a great time to find work or to create work for yourself. Now in the second half of the month, you might find that it's hard to sleep. Uh, that's perfectly natural. You know, a night or two of sleepless nights can happen when the sun is in the 12th house. It's a good time to do work that you can do alone. Okay. Uh, it's a good time to spend time alone as well. Equally, if you're feeling a bit run down or you're feeling your expenses are a bit high, just take a bit of time out. Okay. And don't push things. Now, Venus is in Leo until the 24th of September in your 11th house. This is beautiful energy. Now this is great social energy. You can go out and meet people. If you're single, you can meet that special someone. Uh, it's great for love, but really it's just great social energy. So enjoy that. Now Mercury is exalted all month in your 12th house. From the 11th of September to the 2nd of October, Mercury is in retrograde. So basically this retrograde energy is actually, it's interesting because it's giving you time. And it's actually giving you, in particular Libra, some time to unwind. I kind of get a sense that uh, it would be good for you to use this extra time that you've been given actually to relax. Isn't that interesting? I've got the note here, great energy for imagining and reinventing your future. Great time to spend learning skills that you're going to need in the future. So great time for learning uh, for you there Libra, especially spiritual studies if you're doing any of that. Now there's a full moon happening on the 10th of September in Aquarius, Purva Bhadrapada Nakshatra, happening for you in your fifth house. Now Venus is, of course, there in the 11th. She's being social. She's there with the sun. But in terms of this full moon for the 10th of September, this is a good time for you to reflect on how unified things are, either at your workplace or with your children. Okay. Are you guys all on the same page? How together are you all? You know, and this is not about judgment, but it's just about observing. It's just about looking and seeing how things are. And something will become clear to you and that will help you move forward with ease later on. Now there's a new moon happening, 26th of September, Virgo Uttra Falguni Nakshatra in the 12th house. So you might get some really big spiritual insights uh, something might occur to you, something, you just might get some kind of download come from the other side. It could be in regards to anything, right? So I don't want to limit this. 
but you could you could you, you might be quite psychic at this time how about I put it that way I think you could be very psychic at this time Libra actually because your mercury is uh, yeah look at that your mercury's there as well Ooh, this is high uh, psychic energy okay definitely carry a little journal <laughs> carry a so have a little notebook by your bedside uh, you know write down any insights that come this is quite good energy and I've got the note here 26 September new moon it's a great time to wish for your spiritual gifts to open Libra this is superb energy I'm really excited for you enjoy it enjoy and definitely enjoy uh, that beautiful first half of the month with the sun there that's really great energy all right we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining now this is Scorpio ascendant Scorpio moon Scorpio Sun and we're going to take a look at the energy of the movement of the Sun we're going to take a look at Venus Mercury the full moon and the new moon so the Sun is going to transition from Leo to Virgo across the 17th or 18th of the month and that's happening across your 10th and 11th houses so this oh my goodness look at you this is incredible this whole month is amazing for you right for your work so you can really shine at work uh, you can present your ideas you can you know you, when you speak it'll be well received it'll be it'll be respected it's amazing energy here so definitely put forward your ideas at work or, or be seen or you know this is the time to to excel at work if you can now if you're looking for work this is a wonderful time okay so definitely uh, look for work or be picking up new clients you know this energy is great for you across the entire month so really make the most of that Venus is in Leo until the 24th of September in your 10th house so Venus is there she's helping out she's helping you shine at work she's going to help everything be more beautiful so don't worry too much about love life because Venus is not in the mood for that but she will help make you appear more slick at work or there's something about her I don't know maybe you're redesigning your PowerPoint slides or something like that but you're going to be able to present yourself really beautifully uh, at work as well so that's great now from the 24th onwards your love life is going to be much better okay so don't worry if things have been a bit not great or something like that 24th onwards things are going to improve there now mercury is exalted all month in your 11th house this is amazing energy for you wow I am so happy for you Scorpio you've got the best thing I think going on out of all of these so uh, Mercury is exalted all month in your 11th house and from the 11th of September to the 2nd of October Mercury is going to be retrograde so this is excellent for your work you're going to have time as well on the side and what I would suggest you use this extra time for is to plan plan how you'd like life to go lay down some long-term plans you know uh, and, and just plot the course ahead a bit and see what happens with that I also have the note here that yeah this is excellent for your work share your insights you will be rewarded great for picking up clients new business all that kind of thing you've got beautiful energy here Scorpio it's a good time ahead for you when it comes to your work now there's a full moon happening 10th September Aquarius Purvabhadrapada Nakshatra this is happening in your fourth house so you can reflect on how unified things are in your home how together is the family you know and this isn't about judgment or you know any of that this is just about looking this is just about seeing how, how together are you all are you all on the same page you know how, how does that feel and then there's a new moon happening on the 26th of September in Virgo Uttra Falguni Nakshatra in your 11th house so this is a great time to wish for anything that's dear to your heart okay anything at all in the 11th house you get to wish for what you want it's kind of a wild card whatever you want especially I tend to think material things uh, especially actually isn't that interesting wealth material things if you want a new car I don't know <laughs> whatever it is but it's a good time to plant the seed right you're planting the seed and that's what it's about you plant the seed then over time it grows so Scorpio you've got a terrific month in front of you I'm so excited for you take care enjoy the good energy that you have in front of you and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius 
Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, Sagittarius Sun, and we are going to take a look at the movement of the Sun. We're going to have a look at the movement of Venus, Mercury, the full moon, and the new moon. We have a lot to cover. So the Sun transitions from Leo to Virgo across the 17th, 18th of the month, and that's happening across your 9th and 10th houses. So in the first half of the month, be careful of any run-ins with authority or in your relationship with your father. Okay, so it's not a good month to be having arguments with anyone at the first half of the month, but in the second half of the month, you've got great energy. So this is the energy where you are seen, where you will shine at work. If you're working, if you're looking for work, it's a great time to pick up new work. Uh, the sun is definitely delivering success to you now. Okay, so that's very much from the 17th, 18th onwards right? Then we've got Venus in Leo until the 24th of September in your ninth house. So this is excellent energy if you teach a subject or indeed if you're learning, okay? And uh, very often many of us are doing both. So uh, that's great. So you'll definitely have something to teach, but equally, you know, you'll enjoy the learning process at this time. You'll enjoy learning new things. And Mercury is going to be exalted all month in your 10th house. This is beautiful energy. Okay, so all month you're going to be sharp, you're going to be witty, you're going to be intelligent. Um, people are going to want to hear what you have to say. This is a really great time as well to be publishing anything. If you've got something to publish or share in a bigger way in that sense, this is a good time. Now there is a retrograde happening here with Mercury and that's from the 11th of September to the 2nd of October. And this energy will help you to re-strategize or rethink or plan ahead really. This is more planning ahead for you, I think. This is planning ahead next moves in work, okay? How you want things to grow and progress. But there's really powerful energy here for you that will help you excel at work, definitely. Um, really good energy. Sagittarius, I'm loving it. Now there's a full moon happening on the 10th of September, Aquarius Purva Ashadana, Purva Bhadrapada Nakshatra, my apologies. Uh, easily done, there are too many Purva Nakshatras aren't there. So Purva Bhadrapada Nakshatra, third house for you. So this is a good time to reflect on how unified or united you feel with your friends or your friendship circles or your social circles. Do you feel that you belong? Has anything changed? You know, so this is a really good full moon that's going to illuminate the dynamics in your relationships and how you feel and how you fit in. And there's a new moon happening on the 26th of September in Virgo Uttarfalguni Nakshatra in your 10th house. So this is wonderful energy here with this new moon. So you can really ground or earth uh, your creativity to do with your work. It's also a good time on the 26th of September to wish for the next step in your career to be shown to you or the next move that you need to make. You can plant a seed, you can ask your angels and guides, guide me, show me, what do I need to do next? But Sagittarius, you have got brilliant Mercury energy the whole month, so definitely enjoy that. Thank you so much stopping by and we are now going to welcome Capricorn welcome thank you so much for joining and this is Capricorn ascendant Capricorn moon Capricorn Sun and we're going to take a look at the movement of the Sun Venus Mercury the full moon and the new moon so we've got a lot to cover now the Sun transitions from Leo to Virgo across the 17th 18th of September and that is happening across your eighth and ninth houses. So for the first half of the month, the sun is possibly lighting up some hidden agendas. Okay, you'll be able to see and understand people a lot better. And that could be in the workplace, it could be to do with your family as well. Now, later on in the month, so that's after the 17th, 18th, your work is going to be more in focus, more important. Uh, it's a good time for you to work hard, be a little bit low profile. You don't want to get in any um, imperial entanglements. <laughs> so this is like, you don't want to have any arguments with people in authority or bosses at work or any of that. You're going to have plenty of time to shine. I, I think kind of October onwards, things are going to improve a lot work-wise for you. 
Now Venus is in Leo until the 24th of September in your eighth house. This is beautiful loving energy for you to share with your partner. So that's wonderful. Uh, enjoy this energy and you're going to have more good love life energy. You probably had a little bit of a, it might have been a bit dry uh, over the preceding, uh, the earlier months there, but now things are good. Okay, things are good, good, good. Then you can have a little stint of Venus in Capricorn and then after that you've got a giant stretch of wonderful Venus energy. Okay, so Venus is improving for you. I'm very happy about that. Now Mercury is exalted all month in your ninth house. Uh, this is good, this is good energy but there's also going to be a retrograde here and that's from the 11th of September to the 2nd of October. We've got Mercury in retrograde. So this is really good energy for your work uh, but again you're going to want to take care with authority. Be humble, be low profile, avoid arguments. Okay so that's authority and or father figure in your life. But great energy for your work, great energy for learning career related skills that will take you further. Okay, executive training or um, you know workshops or you know for me I'm always learning from more astrologers, just buying more books, watching more videos. So you know that's what that looks like. So enjoy this energy. You've got some really nice energy here, Capricorn, uh, with Mercury there. There's a full moon happening on the 10th of September in Aquarius, Purva, Bhadrapada, Nakshatra. That's happening in your second house. So you can reflect on how unified you feel with your family unit. Do you feel good at this time? Do you feel like you belong? Do you feel like you need a change? How do you feel? This full moon is just going to illuminate something for you. It's not about judgment, it's just about looking, okay? Looking without judgment. Now there's a new moon happening on the 26th of September in Virgo, Uttara Falguni Nakshatra in your ninth house. So you can wish for a, a new mentor or a new guru. Isn't that amazing? And sometimes, you know, they can be part of your spiritual team. The invisible beings that we don't particularly see but they're there and they're teaching you things right so you could wish for your spiritual team some new guru joins that uh, but you could also wish to you know at this time to gain the skills that you're going to need to go up to progress in life but Capricorn overall it's looking like a pretty good month for you all right well, thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome Aquarius Aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Aquarius ascendant Aquarius moon or Aquarius sun and we're going to take a look at the movement of the sun Venus Mercury we're also going to take a look at the full moon and the new moon so we've got a lot to cover now the sun transitions from Leo to Virgo across the 17th or 18th of the month and this is happening across your seventh and eighth houses. So for the first half of the month, the sun is really lighting up the relationship dynamics you have with your marriage partner or it could be your business partner or just some significant other in your life. Okay, so something might be illuminated for you, might come clear to you, you might see some things there. Uh, you might also want to be alone. Okay, you might not be feeling uh, you, you just might want some alone time as well. Sun, sun in the seventh can be like that. Now later in the month, so that's after 17th or 18th of the month, you might be more family focused, all right? And you might be able to see some deep hidden thing that's going on in your family, okay? Something might become clear to you uh, to do with your family and or to do with your in-laws as well. Now Venus is in Leo until the 24th of September in the seventh house. So this is beautiful energy for your work projects or your side hustle or your moonlighting business or you know this, this could be career related as well, right? This could be to do with work in that sense but it could also be to do with your passion projects as well or your work that you're trying to get off the ground. Could also be to do with your social media platforms, okay? So you've got some really good Venus energy there. This Venus energy until the 27th of September in the seventh house is not the best energy uh, for love, but that's gonna get better, okay? So after the 24th of September, your love life's gonna improve, all right? And that's, you've had a, long, a bit of a long stretch, haven't you Aquarius, that love life hasn't been so good? It's okay, better energy's coming up now after the 24th. 
Now Mercury is exalted all month in your eighth house. This is beautiful. This is great energy for you, Aquarius. I'm so happy. So this is from 11 September. Well, from 11 September to 2nd October, Mercury is going to be in retrograde, right? So we've got this strong Mercury energy here. Now, Mercury excels here in the eighth house. So you're going to be able to powerfully organize your finances or rearrange your finances. Okay, if there's something you need to rearrange in terms of finances, this is a good time. It's also a very good time to plan long term, to think long term when it comes to money, investing and family matters. Now there's a full moon happening on the 10th of September in Aquarius, Purva Bhadrapada Nakshatra, happening in your first house. So you're going to be able to reflect on how unified you feel with all of life. Okay, this is really big. This is your full moon, Aquarius. And you're going to be able to, something might illuminate. We've got all this light coming from the full moon. Something might occur to you about how you fit in, how you feel, whether you belong or not. Okay, and it doesn't matter. We go through all different feelings across life. Sometimes we feel we belong, sometimes we don't. It's okay. Just observe, observe what is, observe what is there without judgment, right? And then something will occur to you in that sort of innocent looking, something will occur to you and you'll be able to move forward with greater skill and clarity and all of that. Now there's a new moon happening on the 26th of September, happening in Virgo, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra in your eighth house. Now there's creative energy here uh, that you can share with your family. Maybe you're creating some beautiful memories with your family there. So that's nice. But you can really wish for something or plant a seed for your whole family. This is on the 26th of September, the new moon. You plant a seed, something that you know is going to improve your life and the life of your whole family. So Aquarius, beautiful energy that you've got here all month. I'm so happy for you. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon, Pisces Sun. And we're going to take a look at the movement of the Sun, Venus, Mercury. We're also going to have a look at the full moon and the new moon for the month of September. Jam-packed episode today. So now the Sun transitions from Leo to Virgo across the 17th or 18th of the month across your 6th and 7th houses. So for the first half of the month, the sun is winning, the sun is shining, the sun is making you shine. So, you know, it's in the sixth house there. So you could win a court case uh, or you could win against the competition. You know, you can attract more clients. All this kind of thing is great here. Now, later in the month, the sun is entering the sixth house there and it might light up some issues in your relationships. Okay, and that is particularly with your partnership or any significant other, maybe a work spouse or somebody, you know, business partner or something like that. So there'll be something revealed to you, uh, you know, something will be lit up there. And I've got the note here that you might want to spend some more time alone. And that's perfectly fine. That's for the second half of the month. You're going to have better transits when it comes to, to love and all that. I can see here yeah, you've got Venus in the sixth. It's not the best time for love life for you guys, Pisces, but it's going to improve, okay? So it's not long to go. So Venus is in Leo until the 24th of September in your sixth house. Not ideal for love, but it's great for work. It's great as well for presenting your work beautifully or designing something. Maybe you have to design something for your work. And I know we've got so many graphic designers and uh, creative people, video film people. We've got all kinds of, especially in Pisces, we've got so many creatives, you know, your film people and actors and all kinds of things. So you've got great energy here for shining when it comes to your work from, from a Venus perspective. So that's good. It's good to be a bit more work focused, yeah. Uh, then we've got Mercury exalted all month in your seventh house. And we've also got Mercury in retrograde from the 11th of September to the 2nd of October. So you might want to re-strategize long-term projects or long-term business plans if you run a business. If you run a social media platform, you might want to rethink something there. Um, you might also want to rethink long-term plans in your relationship, in your marriage as well. Okay, so there's a lot of thinking, a lot of strategizing that you might want to do at this time. Now there's a full moon happening, 10th September, Aquarius, 
Purvabhadra Pada Nakshatra happening in your 12th house. So you can reflect on how unified you feel with the divine energies around you. Do you feel like you're getting the guidance from your angels and guides? Everybody has angels and guides and a spiritual team around them. Do you feel like you're connected? Do you feel like you're getting the guidance and that you're acting on it? Now don't be judgmental or hard on yourself, just observe. And in the observation of that, on that full moon, something might be illuminated, something might come clear to you, and you might be able to act with more precision going forward. So be easy on yourself, but do take a look at that. Now there's a new moon happening on the 26th of September in Virgo Uttrafalguni Nakshatra, happening in your seventh house. So it's a great new moon to wish for. Now you can wish for some very powerful things here. It's the seventh house, so you could wish for your heart to be recalibrated, you know, that you can experience more love in your life. Wouldn't that be amazing? And of course, if you're single, you can wish for that dream partner to come in for you. It's also beautiful creative energy here that you can put into your work. So if there's something that you want to ground or earth creatively, this could be a work-related project, this could be a passion project as well, but you'll be able to earth something and make something happen at this time. Well, Pisces, and anybody who's joined for this whole video, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for liking the video, for commenting, for all the things that you do here on this channel. I really appreciate each and every one of you so much. Thank you so much for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you next time.